Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is inflate. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you're likely to hear inflate used is to mean to fill some structure that can be expanded uh, with air or with gas. So uh, when I think of this definition, my, my mind immediately goes to my car's tires. Occasionally, they need to be inflated. We need to put air into them uh, to continue to uh, drive safely. A second way you'll hear inflate used is to mean to increase something by a large or excessive amount. So uh, here, Sometimes this is uh, maybe a, a nicer or polite, polite, more polite way to tell someone uh, that someone else is lying. Uh, they're increasing the amount. Uh, maybe it's a dollar amount. Uh, inflating what they earn, for example. A third way you might hear inflate used is to mean to exaggerate. Okay, so exaggerate is where you start with something that's kind of true and then it sort of expands, which really helps kind of connect to these other meanings and, and definitions. A fourth way that you might hear inflate used is to mean to cause a currency to undergo inflation or to cause an economy to undergo inflation. Uh, and so you can probably tell inflation is our noun form of this word and we're going to talk about what that means uh, in just a few minutes uh, but essentially it's it's about our ability to purchase things the the costs or increasing and our our uh, the value of our money is is not really keeping up with it so we'll talk a little more about that later you should know that inflate is a regular verb to make the progressive form, all I need to do is drop the E and then add ING to form inflating. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are going to be made by adding a D to the end of this word since it already ends in an E. Our base verb inflate t -t, ends in an unvoiced T sound. So when I add that past tense or participle ending, I'm going to add an extra syllable and say id as I make that sound. The past tense and participle form should sound like this, inflated, inflated. Okay. Now we are going to take a moment to look at a couple phrasal verbs. Um, it's actually a couple meanings with one phrasal verb that is to inflate with. Um, and uh, it's not totally different than the, the previous meanings we discussed, but I thought it'd be good to see some more examples. So the first way you might hear inflate with used um, is to mean you're using some particular device and that device is going to come after uh, our preposition with. So we're using that device in order to put air into something. So an example here uh, might be we're asking uh, if someone is able to help us here with the question, can you inflate this pool, pool toy with a hairdryer? Right? So hairdryer pushes out a lot of air. Uh, and so this, this person is curious, can, uh, can we uh, make something expand uh, with, with this hairdryer? A second way you'll hear inflate with used is to mean to add an amount um, so that whatever you're reporting seems larger than what it really is. This goes back to that second definition we talked about a few moments ago. So an example of this might be the nonprofit raised $100,000 at the event, but then inflated the total with another $100,000 of pledges. So what this is implying or suggesting um, is a particular nonprofit says, our event raised $200,000. Well, it raised 100 and then some pledges or promises, but they didn't actually get $200,000 at that particular event. Now let's continue using our verb of the day in a couple different verb tenses. Today we're going to talk about the simple past tense and the simple future using be going to. 
let's start with the simple past tense. We use this uh, verb tense to talk about an action that was completed in the past at some known uh, point in time. Generally, uh, that action, it's, it's done. There's no connection into the present. Okay? And the nice thing about making simple past tense sentences is that our structure is going to be the same no matter what our subject is. So in the, the affirmative, we're going to have our subject, and then we're going to have that ED form of the verb since it's regular. An example of that might be the coach inflated dozens of soccer balls before camp started. Okay. Uh, many children, young adults, are, are headed to camp. Uh, sometimes they're academic, sometimes they're sports related or art related. Uh, here, this sentence is describing uh, somebody who put air uh, into a soccer ball, right? That can be expanded. Ties back to our first definition. Now, if I want to make a negative simple past tense sentence, my structure is going to be used to have a subject, then did not, and then our base verb. You might also hear the contraction didn't, an example of this. They didn't inflate the price of the property, but it went up due to market conditions. So here, uh, we're not suggesting that someone made something larger um, than, than what it is or, or what it should have been, um, but explaining what caused the price to increase. Lastly, let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple past tense. Our structure here is going to be to start with did, then we're going to have our subject, and then the base verb. So I just like to point out to my students, notice we're only using that ED form in the affirmative or positive. So we don't use it in the negative or in our yes or no questions. So an example of this, did the airbags inflate in the crash? So um, this, uh, this is another common way you might hear inflate used. It's tie tying back to that first definition of filling with air. Um, all automobiles are, are made now with this extra protection to, to keep us safe, to prevent us from hitting a windshield, hitting uh, the steering wheel, and, and really hurting ourselves during a car accident. Now, let's take a moment to look at the simple future. Today, we're going to focus on using be going to. That's really common uh, with people making plans. Um, you might also hear it sometimes with predictions as well. We do have to pay attention to our subject here. Our subject is going to change uh, due to our, our forms of be. All right, I should say our form of be will change based on what the subject is, right? So in a sentence, if I use I, I'm going to use am next. If I use you, we, or they, I'll use are, and if I if my subject is he, she, or it, I'll use is. Okay, so that first part of this verb tense changes, but then it's the same. So form of be, going, to, and then the base verb. Here's an example. Giving him too many compliments is going to inflate his ego. Right, so uh, ego kind of being his, his uh, one sense of self. Uh, and, and kind of how highly uh, someone uh, thinks of themselves. So uh, this might be one of those predictions. Uh, someone who thinks this is going to happen, if we keep saying, you're wonderful, this is great, way to go, right? That ego will expand. Another uh, example sentence in the negative here, um, our structure is going to start with our subject, then the form of be that matches it, then not, then going to and our base verb. So an example, car costs aren't going to inflate in the next six months as they have in the last year. Here's another prediction. Um, I've seen a few people, uh, different economists, make this particular prediction uh, about our, our costs going to continue to rise. Finally, if we want to make a yes or no question in the simple future, we're going to start with our form of be that matches our subject, and that subject comes next, then going to and the base verb. Here's an example. 
are you going to inflate the air mattress? So here, maybe I'm asking about somebody's plans. Um, I, this is uh, an air mattress, uh, something common many people have in their home in case they're guests and need, we need a, a softer surface for other people to sleep on. Uh, sometimes people use it at, with camping as well. But uh, many times the, the idea is you can store them in, in kind of a smaller area by removing the air. But then when your guest needs it, you need to put the air in it. You need to inflate it. Now let's take a moment to look at some words that are related to our verb inflate. And as I promised earlier, we're going to talk uh, about the noun inflation. Okay? So uh, when we use this noun, we can use it a couple different ways. One would be to refer to the action of putting air or putting gas into some object. So an example of this might be inflation of the hot air balloons will begin soon. Okay, so that idea of putting, in this case, uh, hot air into the balloon to make it uh, able to lift off and give someone or some groups a ride. But I think the more common way that you're going to hear this noun, especially right now in 2022, uh, is to refer to this general increase in prices and the fall of the purchasing value of money. So this definition might, oh, might make your head uh, hurt. It very much connects to the subject of uh, economics. Um, and many people are sort of it, having problems because of this. And, and this connects to my example sentence here. Many families are dealing with inflation by using local food pantries. So uh, the costs of many, if not all foods right now um, in the United States and in other countries as well, have really been increasing. Right? But people don't have necessarily more money right now. So that that's that idea of connecting to the purchasing value. So uh, some families uh, are, are going to food pantries to get free food to uh, make sure their family uh, have enough to eat. Another related word that you might hear is the adjective inflatable. And that suffix, A-B-L-E. Uh, I always like to point that out to my students. We can kind of connect it back, able to be and we'll go back to our verb, inflated. So this is capable or able of being filled with air. An example of this in a sentence might be, our neighbors just bought an inflatable hot tub. So it's not a permanent structure, right? It's one we can put air into. I will also note the word inflatable is occasionally used as a noun. Um, and when it's used as a noun, someone is referring to uh, either a plastic or rubber object that needs to be filled with air so that you can use it. And in the bottom right hand corner, corner of our screen, I have a picture of some pool inflatables. Um, so right, I hope you can see though, they're all sitting on top of, of the water. Um, but uh, you might, might hear that word if you're swimming this summer. So an example uh, in a sentence would be, they bought some new inflatables for the pool. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.